over the last 50 years, uh, when we were talking about technological innovation, it was clear that this technological innovation was coming either from the US or from Europe or from Japan or more recently from South Korea. But the point is that over the last, let's say, five or ten years, things are changing a lot. Okay? And uh, emerging countries like China, like India, like Brazil, are more and more places where technological innovation is taking place. One fascinating thing which appeared is the creation of science park. Science and technology parks. So most of the people they know about Zhangjiang, which, which is close to here. Uh, they know about Zhongguanshan in Beijing. They know about Suzhou High Tech Park. Um, they know about Shenzhen. Uh, but many people they don't know that now we have more than 100, 100 high tech parks here in China. So we, which makes a significant number. Um, but the point is that if you compare those parks to uh, what we have in Europe, for example, uh, it's a bit different. When I came here for the first time in Zhangjiang, I was surprised not to find exactly the same type of atmosphere. The, the point is that Zhangjiang is a wonderful place, but it will take time to, to root, okay, to create some relationship between the different bodies, I mean, create relationship between big companies and... Uh, uh, small companies, startups, biotech, and so on and so on, uh, universities, uh, research centers. Now, regarding uh, publication, it's also uh, astonishing how many uh, progresses have been made over the last 10 years. Uh, you know, today, uh, China is catching up uh, the scene regarding uh, scientific publication. Uh, uh, in terms of quantity, for sure, uh, so China bypassed uh, Germany, UK, France, and now they are so making closer and closer to, to the US. Okay, so that's for quantity. Uh, now regarding quality, quality has still to be improved, even if you have some publications which are made in uh, major journals like Cell, Nature, Science, um, so, quality is very high, but I mean, you know, when, when you talk about scientific publications, uh, you, you need to talk also about uh, the impact of those scientific publications. So, again, we need a bit of time in order to root, in order to have more uh, quotation or uh, citation of uh, what uh, Chinese researchers are doing. So, improvement for, for science and technology parks, improvement for uh, scientific publication, and more and more resources, uh, structures, organization, uh, regulatory framework, uh, whatever we look at, I mean, the situation is improving. You still have space for improvement, okay? You still have uh, things that need to be uh, uh, better better organized or better rooted. But anyway, we, we are on the right track. You have to be part of this, otherwise you will miss something. That's clear, no question about that. And I think that those companies that are pioneers, that have decided to come now, pioneer, uh, in China, in order to be part of this uh, move, uh, they will create uh, strong competitive advantage compared to the competitors which have decided to stay in Europe or to stay in the US. Yes, for sure China is being part of the picture, the R&D map, okay? So not being here would be a big mistake. I think if you are here, if you do some R&D here, you will be part of a network, you will grow with the network, okay? You will create symbiotic relationship inside SunSpark with uh, Chinese university with uh, res public research institutes, okay, and it will create some value. You will add much more value by doing this type of R&D here. Most of the foreign companies, when they came here to do R&D, let's say 10 years ago, they came here for cost, because they wanted to reduce the cost of R&D. I should not say R&D, to reduce the cost of D, and end of development, end of development. So they came here for this. 
because the cost of an engineer was simply five times less than the cost of an engineer in Europe or in the US. But after a while, I understood that it was possible to do something more interesting. Okay, something more interesting. It, mo it means that they, they move to a, a marketing-driven R&D. They understood that by taking some technologies in, in, in Europe and taking those technologies from Europe coming here in in China, it was not enough. So those technologies you have to adapt. You have to adapt to local demand, you have to adapt to local regulation, conditions. Okay, so they move from a cost-driven R&D to a marketing-driven R&D. And I think that most of the companies, foreign companies that are here, they know that. They know very well. They know the key success factor for cost-driven R&D, they know the key success factor for marketing-driven R&D. Our point, our point is that, once again, it's not enough. If you want to create value, you have to move to a third step. And the third step is to go for a knowledge-driven R&D. And what is a knowledge-driven R&D? A knowledge-driven R&D is coming to China to do R&D, but in order to gain access to the knowledge which is created by universities, research institutes, startups, incubators, CRO, I mean, contract research organization in the pharmaceutical industry, for example, biotech in the uh, pharmaceutical industry. All these networks, all those bodies, those different bodies are creating value and you need to be in touch with this. You need to be in touch with this knowledge which is created now in this country.